All right, we're back with another edition of the Morning Mike. I'm super excited to have Jason Ackerman on today. So thank you so much for coming on our show. And uh, we got through the first quarter of the year. So I first wanted to start off with uh, introducing you and you giving us a little information on what you do. Uh, so our audience who doesn't know already, uh, you can inform them on what you do so well. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for having me on the Morning Mike. Um, my name is Jason Ackerman. I'm a real estate attorney. I've been practicing real estate law for 25 years. Wow. Um, I solely practice transactional real estate law. That way I can focus on what I do best, what I love best. Uh, I have three offices currently and I close transactions throughout the state of Florida. Um, I have a network of closers so I can do any closing anytime, anywhere. It's great. So the question I always get people who are buying or selling, they don't really know what they need. So what is the, you know, the difference on hiring a attorney, a real estate attorney versus a real estate title company? So a title company is, could be run by a licensed title agent, could be run by someone who has just come into the industry, doesn't necessarily know the law, um, cannot give legal advice which is a big thing because they do give legal advice and they're not licensed to give legal advice. Um, I offer the same, uh, the same items, the same, uh, the same work as title companies, but you get my legal experience. Sure. Um, sometimes the cost of having seller representation is a little bit higher than what the title company might have, but the title company is selected by the buyer. So they are going to be on the buyer side ultimately. Um, they are not looking out for the seller's best interest. They are not always available to the seller. It is in the seller's best interest to hire their own representation. Um, that way we can work flexibility with your schedule. Um, if any kind of liens or any issues come up, you have someone looking out for you and that's clearly worth maybe an extra hundred, two hundred dollars Yeah. I think a lot of fallacies that people or misconceptions and we deal with a lot of sellers, they're like, well, you know, we don't want to hire an attorney. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really work exactly like that because somebody has to prepare your seller docs. Mm -hmm. If you don't hire somebody to do that, then of course the buyer uh, representation on title will do that. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them if they're going to do that, they're going to charge you. So it's best. And if, you know, anything comes up in the, the deal, you have to have a, a contract looked at. I mean, we've introduced you our sellers as even when we get the listings just to get, you know, their ideas, their, their net sheets, their payoffs you can run. You can run any title things. There's so many advantages because I always say that it, problems happen in the beginning or the end of the transaction. Let's try to solve them in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So understand going through the process and having an inspection done. What happens if there's legal advice needed? You're, you're, you might wait for that title attorney that might have to get somebody involved that could take time. And those precious movements when a buyer and a seller are emotionally connected could be spoiled if that advice is not given in an expeditious manner. So we're, we're focused on that. And it's interesting. You said, you mentioned the word time. Um, my fee is a flat fee. It's one flat fee, whether I talk to you once or I talk to you 25 times throughout the transaction. Uh, it's definitely not hourly, and that's something that people worry about. I think people are, that's that's kind of the misconception because I think people are, are not attracted as a seller in Broward County to say, I'm going to represent, have a title representation because I don't want to pay them more. I'm already paying my fees. And, you know, I always give a net sheet when I have a seller and I put, put the fee in for the attorney because I tell them at day one what they're getting. So I think they understand it. They, they engage in it. And I think once they're told that you're not paying an hourly fee, so, you know, I don't want you to be called 500 times, Jason, but there's been some deals where you definitely have saved the deal. You've definitely made the seller feel way more comfortable because you gave that legal advice at the right time and was able to get it to, to the finish line. Or even at walkthroughs when, you know, the house has got all that furniture in there and then you go to the walkthrough and all of your things were removed and there's something there. You are have the best interest of the deal. You're there. You're, you're basically on hold waiting for that walkthrough to go. So the sellers, you know, seller side documents. And plus our sellers have had the conveniency of having it sent to them if they're on trip or their work trip or vacation. You've had them at all three of those offices that you can conveniently wherever they're working. So it's great that you can send a mobile closer out. I mean, we've made it after COVID where 
you know, good thing from COVID was that, you know, we've, we've gotten better with our technology and, 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 and made it where it's easier. So buyers and sellers, I don't even think it's legal that a buyer and seller can sit in a room together and sign documents. So that's it a good thing. It hasn't been done in a long time, I, that's for sure. You almost had to play referee at those, oh, some of those closings oh, where, because yeah. people get emotional when it comes to money. So I think these are some good things, but we have some changes coming with the, the NAR agreement and we don't know what the, what the final decision is going to be, but they've, They've honestly put some wheels in motion that most likely we're going to have uh, no commission being disclosed on the MLS as well as uh, buyers, agents, or have to have buyer brokerage agreements signed. You know, with that market changing, how much is it still even more or less important to have an attorney involved in the process if you're selling or buying right now with these changes coming? It's very important. And I'll tell you, it's such a gray area right now. No one knows what's going to happen. No one knows how these these new uh, agreements are going to be prepared, what they're going to say. So now more than ever is the time when you need someone looking out for your best interest. I, I, I agree. I mean, I'm going on appointments now. People are asking me about it. We're getting Jason involved to, to even talk about what could be because we don't even know if this will take effect in mid-July because we're all going to have different buyer agreements, listing agreements, you know, all rules and regulations for the MLS all the local boards. I mean, each state is different. So I think there there's going to so be a lot much of change that needs to be done before. There's no way by July that it's all going to be completed. My perspective is it's, you know, every people don't, people don't like change. Mm-hmm. You know, as I get older, 45 years old, I don't like change, mm-hmm. but I understand a lot of the things that could be in, you know, that can improve our industry through having more disclosure, um, more transparency. How do you feel about that? Because we do a lot of deals where agents, we don't even know, we don't hear about them. We're basically doing both sides of the deals anyways. Mm-hmm. They just have a friend of the family that puts the deal together they don't, and they send it to us and it's all wrong. And then you come in as the attorney, fix it all. So tell me how you think that that, that this this change in contracts, at, which pertains to the law and real estate attorneys, how will that improve? It could take time, but how do you think overall it will improve? I, mean, I definitely think it will improve. It definitely is going to be a period of adjustment and figuring out where and when and how it's all going to work out. But in the end, I think it's going to be much more transparent. I think that it's going to be much more clear and it's just going to be a much smoother process. Okay. And then finally, we have gone through our first quarter. We've had a great first quarter. Knock wood. Uh, we have a lot of listings, a lot of buyers coming in. We, we, we do see that we expected rates to be lower already. And the Fed, we, we just found out they haven't lowered a rate in 59 months. So we're hoping by the 60 month, 61st month, we'll see our, see our first rate decline, you know, lower of rate could be 20, uh, 25 base, but could be 50. Um, you know, we had our, our uh, meeting today and it was very helpful to hear this, but what do you feel will happen if rates go down right now inventory in parkland's up about 29 percent from this year last uh, from last year now and rates are about a half a point to 0.75 percent more than it was last year at this time so how do you feel these changes if the fed does for you know lower rate how will that affect the market how would it affect it in regards to what you and i do um i do think that it's time for the rates to go down a little bit uh, I think at the next meeting, I believe it's at the end of April, um, I, I believe there will be the first drop in 59 months. 60 months over. 60. Yeah. Um, I think that it'll probably drop at the next two meetings. So I, I think we're, you know, we're headed into a new territory. Um, there's going to be a lot more buyers that are able to afford to buy uh, with prices drop or with uh, rates dropping. So I think we're going to see it become more of a buyer's market. And uh, I'm excited for what's to come. I mean, we need it. I think we deserve it. I yeah. Mean, I was saying, you know, what, what comes up comes down, but what comes down comes up eventually. So I, I'm on the belief that, you know, I look back last year, a little earlier in the year, we had rates for like a day, a couple of days, maybe a week that were under 6%. Mm-hmm. And I remember that there was a 30% increase in applications for loans. Mm-hmm. So that really spurred our our growth of what we did last year, I think, as a real estate uh, entity. 
And then obviously rates went into the eights by October and kind of fizzled the market. And then the Fed announced they might lower rates six times. That's not happening. Right. Um, we'll be lucky to get two. I mean, people say maybe three, but I, I agree with it. I think we'll have two rate cuts. I think rates will get into the possible low sixes. Maybe you can buy down the rate in the fives. Um, but I think we're going to be there. Maybe I saw some projections that maybe they could go into the, the, you know, even lower in the fives in 2025. So there's different programs out there. But I, I do believe we're going to see an influx in buyer activity. It's not going to be where people saw 2 to 4% rates and there's 100 people lined out in front of your house. Mm-hmm. But I remember last year. So I think it, it'll be more advantageous this year to have the best representation because I think a lot of people last year when rates even went under 6%, I don't. I didn't see the fury of people because they were they were so focused on those low payments that they had mm-hmm. and getting in the two, three, four percent rate. Now, if they see the horizon, they could be in the five. People might want to trade up or down. People want to move. They have all this equity in their house and they can't refinance it, and they can't pull it out and take some money. Or they have to either sell it or refinance it. So people right. are going. You know, buyers need to be sellers first. So remember when you're working with a real estate transaction you're tending to do a double-ended side you're you're either buying and and selling or you're selling then buying Mm -hmm. you know whatever order you can do financially so understand you've worked with a lot of our clients that have sold then bought maybe they need the funds transfer that day and you're right there waiting for that deal to close (laughs) so understand more than ever representation transparency having all of your ducks in a row and understanding the process it's your largest financial asset people have made you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate changed their lives their families lives they've been able to do so many things for themselves you know I, I, and i said with this change in this nar rule i believe the, the, the it'll be a darwin's theory of survival of the fittest but i think the best agents will step forward cuz 10% of the agents do 90% of the business mm-hmm. and i think people will value a real estate professional even more because they're going to see in writing they're going to see those buyer brokerage agreements they're going to see those listing agreements they're going to see those contracts and they're going to understand way in the early part of the process with attorney representation mm-hmm that they're going to know what is really the detail of a transaction. It's not just looking online and watching buying Beverly Hills or selling sunsets and all those things. I mm-hmm. wish it was that easy. I mean, I wouldn't have these gray hair. You wouldn't be bald. Right. And, you know, we, we would look 20 years younger. So Absolutely. understand with, you know, we've been through the crash of the real estate market. We've been through COVID. And I think through this new change, it, it will remove a lot of agents that probably were already one foot out of the business. Yep. Um, but I do feel our value will be elevated. And I think the best agents will move forward and lead through a changing of times. And look, we're ready for it. Knowledge is power. And I think we'll be able to get through this easily. I completely agree with you. Well, thank you so much for coming to our meeting earlier. I think it was very uh, eventful, educational. And thank you for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. And thank you for everything you do for our clients. Likewise.